to go. And facing the prospect of a second straight year out of the playoffs, the first time that will would have happened in more than 40 years. Corey Rogers from the seven yard line on this kick return. A stutter step at the 25 and down he goes. On a short return and Adam Braidwood makes the tackle. Jarius Jackson has a five and two record as a starter with the BC Lions. And he's at the controls of a powerhouse offense that has scored 37 or more points in five of the last seven games. Yeah, and Jarius Jackson does it a different way than those other two guys. He, he really relies on the passes downfield. Doesn't need to have a big passing completion percentage, but he gets the job done. Jackson on first down at the 27-yard line. Straight back on a short drop, wide side, wide open, and incomplete as Corey Rogers lost that one and will set the BC starting offensive line. Yeah, we look at this, the backfield, and it all starts with Joe Smith, recently over 1,000 yards, leading the league in rushing. You know he's going to get the ball. The three-headed monster of Jackson, Simon, and Claremont, all of these guys are very solid receivers. And then what is arguably the best line in the in the game today, they love to pass rush, but they have something to prove from last game. That line sets the tone on offense on second and 10, pumping now. Jackson throwing downfield for G-Roy Simon, and it's overthrown and incomplete. Two and out on the opening series as we check the Edmonton defense. Yeah, Edmonton defense comes out and plays tight at, at the start. Defensive line, Ron Warner up front has been getting a lot of push in the last four or five weeks. Linebackers, A.J. Gass, 10th year with the Edmonton Eskimos playing as, as good a football as he has been. In the defensive backfields, it all starts with Jason Goss. The rest of these guys have really improved their game. Had a strong last four games, the Edmonton defense, allowing an average of just 17 points against. Lenny Williams is the lone man back for Edmonton to receive this punt from Paul McCallum back in the lineup after missing a game with a lower back injury. Lenny Williams at the 45. Tyson Craigs, the long snapper, had him in his grasp, but he can't get away for about three yards on the return. But a flag down, and it will be no yards the call against BC, and this could be a 15-yard penalty. Oh, yeah, and this is going to give Edmonton a great field position again. This is two series in a row. They want to continue and keep that momentum going for them, especially with this team. They know that it's very good on defense. No yards. BC, number 25, 15-yard penalty. First down. That's the rookie, Jerome Dennis, in too close. And let's have a look at Paul McCallum and his first punt. Remember, he missed last week's game, taking a shot two weeks ago against Calgary and he's a little nimble after his first offering. We'll see how he does throughout the course of this afternoon. The Eskimos with a field goal to show for their first Yo, drive go back on offense. A bunch formation. Now they waggle to the wide side. Four receivers in that direction for Stefan Lafors and he hands off Tyler Ebel with tough sledding up the gut in a game of two to the sidelines this afternoon. You know, it's going to be really interesting. Trey Derelick is playing center for the Eskimos. He was just acquired in September. He's an American, has never played in the CFL. And coming against a defensive front in, a, uh, in the BC Lions, they're going to be moving around like crazy. It's going to be interesting to see whether or not he's sharp on his calls today. Yes, Trey Derelick, a fourth-round NFL draft pick in 2004 of the Philadelphia Eagles. To the wide side, wide open, and Fred Stamps has his first catch of the afternoon, and he'll step out of touch with a first down. That was great touch by Stefan LaForce on that play. I mean, the BC Lions, they only rush three on this play, so they drop nine people deep. Stefan LaForce reads it quickly, gets the ball out there before Stamps even comes out of his break and delivers a perfect ball. So after two drops by the Eskimo receivers in the opening drive, Stamps hangs on tight. And Edmonton moves to the 34 of BC. The fours now with an audible at the line of scrimmage. Straight back to Southpaw. Throwing in the flats, Tyler Ebell makes the catch. And he's forced out of touch by Otis Floyd. Ebell was the Eskimos' leading receiver in the first game these two teams played back in early July. Yeah, and I think one of the reasons we see him as a leading receiver is because teams drop back so often and allow that running back to get open underneath. 
Ebill had 10 catches for 87 yards back on July 6th at BC. Play action. LaFors quickly away to Fred Stamps. He bobbles it, hangs on, beats Dante Marsh, then Corey Banks, and he's got a first down. 